This conference will now be recorded. Okay, now let's understand the basic points relating to your vendor outgoing payment related transactions. Let me put vendor outgoing payment transactions. So there are a couple of points which we have to remember with respect to vendor payments. First one, let's say majority of the payments are made using bank accounts and few payments are made using cash accounts okay but most of your vendor payments are part of bank accounts not part of cash account next one for bank payments house bank functionality is a must and for cash payments what is must cash general cash journal functionality is a must for every bank operated by an organization is treated as a house bank and for every bank account we must allocate how many GL accounts? Ten. For every bank account, how many ten. GLs? Ten. ten. You have to allocate ten GL accounts. Ten GL accounts. Out of ten, one is main, main account and remaining a sub account right why we use the sub accounts for reconciliation for smooth run sub accounts are used for smooth APP, APP and brs brs purpose right so these are certain basic points that must be in your mind when it comes to your vendor outgoing payment it's not that straight away you're able to do the transaction but before that try to understand these points so that if somebody is asking you can tell in a conceptual way why you are using only bank accounts why not cash account all these points you have to have some justification with you along with practical examples now, assuming payment made by bank are either through check or transfers, right? For checks, separate sub GLs are created and for transfers separate sub GLs created am I correct for checks you need separate sub GL accounts 
for transfers you need separate sub gl accounts for printing checks and generating bank transfer letters we need technical consultant in short and web support clear for yes. you to print a check or for you to generate the bank transfer letter you need technical consultant in short web support now let us try to create one bank payment related transaction and then see how the entry is being posted Let me run vendor line item report for our company code execute we've got one vendor account which is universal bookstore in this there are certain open items outstanding let me take the first invoice which is this Okay, document number 19 all zeros one the outstanding amount is 12,000 First point that you have to remember from your vendor account before initiating any payment Is that whether your vendor account balance is credit or not? clear up Before initiating vendor payment you must ensure your vendor account balance is in negative only then it represents It is a liability for you Sometimes if your vendor account balance is not negative if it is positive then you are not supposed to make the payment to vendor instead you are supposed to receive from your vendor agree yes sir right so you have to pay attention at vendor account balance whether it is showing a debit balance or credit balance not to post any payment transaction directly into the vendor account now assuming we have overall 33000 liability for this vendor but out of which if we want to initiate the payment for this invoice now this invoice is outstanding of 12,000 if I put let's say invoice value is 12,000 now invoice value 12,000 represents vendor liability is 12,000 correct yes sir vendor liability is 12,000 <clears throat> once you see there is a liability in the vendor account you have to initiate the payment before initiating the payment you have to understand how you are going to settle this vendor okay before initiating the payment you have to think or you have to know how are you going to settle this vendor whether you are going to settle the vendor using a cash or using bank if you are using a cash you will have to use cash account to initiate the payment if you are using a bank you will have to use bank account for initiating the payment am i correct yes yes sir let's say settlement options so i have cash or bank so cash you will use cash gl for bank what we will use Bank GL main it's a cash account. If it's a cash settlement, you will be using a cash GL account. If it's a bank settlement, you will be using a bank GL account. If it is a cash, there is only one cash account. Correct? There is no sub GL in cash. Cash is only one account. But when it comes to bank, bank has got sub GL concept. Yes, sir. Right? When it comes to bank, bank has a sub GL concept. When it comes to this sub GL concept, you have to understand with bank how you are going to settle. You need to have further breakdown of your bank transaction, whether you are settling using bank check or bank transfer. If it is bank check, you will have to use check clearing account. If it is bank transfer, you will have to use bank transfer clearing account. 
clear up any doubt so far no sir assuming example we are clearing using cash okay if you are assuming we are using cash first thing that you'll have to see is what is the liability what is the liability for this considering 12, this what 12000 12000 is your liability if your liability is 12000 if you are issuing a payment using a cash you have to check available cash now if my available cash is let's say 10000 can i make the cash payment no my liability is 12000 but my available cash is only 10000 can i complete this transaction or not no i cannot complete the transaction because i have insufficient funds or i have deficit funds right funds are not sufficient so it is not possible for me to clear this invoice or settle this transaction now available cash must be greater than liability value in this case it should be more than 12000 agree if i have my cash balance more than 12000 then i can initiate this transaction i can issue the cash to the vendor if this is not the case you are not supposed to initiate cash payment you have to remember cash account should never show credit balance okay cash account should never show a credit balance which means there is no negative balance concept in cash account at any given point of time you must see a positive balance in the cash account if you look at the account balance here you're not supposed to look at the individual transaction you are supposed to look at the final closing balance of the account which means this this is the total balance do not look at each line item 3000 positive 12000 negative but look at the end balance of the account which is nothing but closing balance of the account in that manner your cash account closing balance should never be a negative balance right so if your cash account is showing a negative balance which means there is a big mistake in your accounting system is not going to stop you posting a credit balance in cash account because as long as debit credit is matching sap will allow you to record any transaction right but when you are practicing when you are creating a transaction always try to think from the business point of view how a business will initiate the payment of cash do they directly record the transaction and then check the cash or first they will check the cash and then initiate the transaction what will happen first do they check cash balance yes sir they will first check whether the funds are available or not only then they will initiate the transaction right okay now cash payment must be posted using petty cash or cash journal functionality okay cash payment must be posted using petty cash or cash journal functionality and cash payment will not clear the vendor invoice cash payment will not clear the vendor invoice am i clear what do i mean cash payment will not clear vendor invoice if you look at this vendor outstanding report assuming this is your invoice 19 all zeros one when i run the report is this coming as due or not due this is coming with red open item yes sir. right 
when i make the payment ideally this should disappear from this list it should not appear all right 19 all zeros one should disappear from this list but when you make a cash payment using petty cash or cash journal screen this will still appear here and your cash payment will also appear here as open item in short there will be one more 12000 with a positive number there will be one more 12000 with a positive number and the net impact will be reduced by 12000 so 33000 minus 12000 it should show your outstanding as 21000 but you will still be able to see your invoice is outstanding your payment also outstanding this is standard behavior of your petty cash or your cash journal payment clear up you might be questioned yes. tomorrow can we clear the invoice using a cash journal you can make the payment but you cannot clear it automatically it has to be manually cleared or manually knocked off okay and if you are not able to understand these kind of questions it will straight away give an impression that you have not worked okay we will be able to post the transaction but practically from business point of view we are not connecting the dots so you should connect these dots from the business point of view so cash payment will not clear the vendor invoice so what it will do it will cash it payment clear the liability entry will appear as open item in vendor line item report with positive value net outstanding of vendor will be reduced am i correct yes sir that outstanding of your vendor will be reduced but your payment will show as open and all these points are all theoretical points practically when we see you will be able to connect but you have to read through all these points okay if tomorrow if somebody is asking you what will happen with your cash payments what benefits you have or how do you convince your client of cash payment all these kind of questions when you are put across you will have to talk these kind of a simple simple theoretical points one liners now and we have to manually clear the invoice and payment entry from clear vendor transaction for cash payments okay you have to manually clear invoice and payment entry from clear vendor transaction for cash payments now this is what basically happens with your cash payment thing now another example if you are clearing using bank if you are clearing using bank the first point is the same you will again check what is your liability what is the liability 12000 correct huh? your mode of payment is getting changed but your liability is still the same 12000 agree Yes. Sir. Now, in this case, I have to decide what mode of bank payment is used. In short, check or transfer. Clear? We have to check mode of payment. Now both are possible check payment and a transfer payment from bank or only one is possible
when you're talking about bank payment only check payment is possible or bank transfer is also possible both both are possible now option number one check payment okay let's go ahead with option number one as check payment now first what we need first we'll have to ensure sufficient funds are available in bank correct huh? you must ensure you have the sufficient funds in your bank account second thing we must have check leaves or check stock with us okay without having a check can i show a check no right if i do not have a check if i do not have checkbook or check leaf check stock i cannot give a check to the supplier so i need to make sure first point i have funds in my bank account second point i have checkbook with me third one check format is designed or available in sap right check format is designed or available in sap now why we need check format designed or available in sap there are again two types of check payments in sap okay manual check and automatic check what is manual check after posting the document we will manually print the check no manual check means we are writing the check manually with the pen i take the empty check i will write date i will write the name i will write the amount i will put the amount in words as you normally use your personal check that is my manual check clear when i say manual check i mean i am writing the check manually okay and automatic check means check is printed from sap which means your check date name amount amount in words everything is printed from sap this is your automatic check manual check means you are writing the check manually with a pen am i clear any doubt confusion in this clear no sir yes sir right now so in automatic check so format is very important when you talk about format what format are you talking about check format check format when you're talking about a format you're talking about check format now why we are talking about check format is because let's say you are operating account with hdfc you are operating account with ICIC, city bank state bank or various other banks every bank may have different different check format right banks may have different different check format now if every so, bank is having a different check format you have to design that format in sap with the help of again technical abap 
now now in india based on rbi guidelines you have something called cts system so there is something called common check format cts what is the cts format any idea anyone check truncating system check truncating system right check truncating system what does this mean format will be same sir except bank payment all right in cts format in cts check format remains common for all the banks when i say format remains common for all the bank if you simply draft a check example let's say this is your check assuming this is your check now this let's say here you will get bank name logo whatever okay assuming you are getting bank name logo whatever here and down below if you get pay and wherever it is starting if it is starting from here on every bank check it will start from here only if let's say there are five spaces 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 what whatever the space if you take a scale and then measure the same measurement will be there on every bank check clear same measurement will be there on every bank check in short if you take any two checks of any two different banks let's say you take hdfc bank check you also check state bank check if you put both checks together if you take scale on your both hands measure the pay name on both the checks it will remain exactly at the same position if this is let's say from top second row 10th character on the other bank check also it is at the same position which means you are going to design a cts format in your bank using which you can print any bank check right because the format has is the similar correct check measurement everything is common using cts format currently every bank will follow the same cts format if somebody is asking you if you have worked on automatic payment or check printing in sap they might ask how did you design the check they will expect from you to talk this cts term okay if you have let's say three different banks how do you design the checks in sap you must talk that we have our client was following cts format because it is not your client choice it is your rbi guideline every bank will have to follow the same so one time you are going to design the check format and you will be able to print any bank check using that format once you have this format you have to ensure it is properly designed properly tested when we say properly designed properly tested you have to do a sample print out from system from your development system you have to take sample print out how do you test this sample print out you have to test on the check only correct sample print out you have to print on the check only so sometimes you will take one check and then you will do a color xerox of that check and you will cut that a4 size sheet according to the check and then you will start printing it so they might ask you at this level also how did you test this how did you ensure that your check printing is working fine 
if you tell no this was the activity performed by the technical consultant then you're wrong technical consultant will only design the check as a functional FICO consultant you are going to test it whether it is working fine whether you are able to print on the proper place on the check or not once all this is done you are going to move this or roll this up to your client clear Yes. Let's say pay whatsoever. I'm not writing the other information. So for us to use check payments, house bank setup is a must. All right, house bank must be done check lots are created okay house bank is a must check lots are mandatory because when you initiate a payment and when you want to give a check to it in system there must be a link tomorrow i want to know what is the check number i have given for this invoice All right in short assuming this is the invoice what is the invoice document number 19 all zeros one yes sir how will i know that if this invoice is paid or not once it is paid it is it will be removed from the open item manager so first point once the invoice is paid it will be removed from the open item and it will contain a green indicator first point second point if it is paid you will find this clearing document field updated you will see this clearing document yes sir right? this clearing document field will get updated if this invoice is paid so this clearing document is nothing but payment document so by looking at this invoice i can see if i double click on this invoice currently above assignment or below assignment next to assignment do you find any field called clearing on this screen anywhere do you see clearing no sir no right which means this invoice is not yet paid so once this is paid system will add one more column here called clearing and then clearing date which means payment document payment document date now once you have this information i come to know that okay this invoice is already paid with this document this is the payment entry but i am only talking about payment is made or payment is not made based on the report but my vendor is not okay with it or my purchasing team or any other team is not okay with it they want to know if you have already paid how did we pay is that the next question how did you make the payment how was the settlement done whether you have issued a cash or you have given a check you have transferred to the bank account if you have given the cash who collected the cash or who has given the cash on what date cash is given is this information needed cash voucher and all yes sir cash means cash is handed over to somebody who collected the cash that information is needed if you have given a check you need the check number right if you have given a check you need check number and check date if you have given bank transfer then you will need that transfer transaction number transfer reference number yes no so if you are making a payment it is not just about making a payment document in the system it is also includes your settlement mode how did you settle the transaction to the vendor if you have issued cash who collected it if you have issued a check what is the check number when this was issued if it is a transfer when it was transferred what was the transfer reference number all this information is always associated with your payment especially when it comes to vendor now that is why there is a topic called app what is app 
ऑटोमेटिक पेमेंट प्रोग्राम ऑटोमेटिक पेमेंट प्रोग्राम नाउ दिस एपीपी और ऑटोमेटिक पेमेंट प्रोग्राम इज अ मैंडेटरी टॉपिक और मैंडेटरी क्वेश्चन इन एवरी एस आई पी एफ आई सी ओ इंटरव्यू राइट सो वाई एवरीबडी विल फोकस ऑन दिस ऑटोमेटिक पेमेंट प्रोग्राम इट इज नॉट ओनली टू नो इफ यू आर गुड एट और इफ यू आर हैविंग नॉलेज ऑन ए पी पी कॉन्फिगरेशन बट इट इज मेजोरिटीली टू अंडरस्टैंड हाउ क्लियर यू आर विद ए पी पी प्रोसेस वेंडर पेमेंट प्रोसेस इन एन ऑर्गेनाइजेशन मोस्ट ऑफ द पीपल विल थिंक ओनली फ्रॉम द ए पी पी कॉन्फिगरेशन पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू बट दट इज नॉट द एक्सपेक्टेशन फ्रॉम यू बिकॉज ए पी पी कॉन्फिगरेशन इज वेरी स्ट्रेट फॉर्वर्ड बट देर आर डिफरेंट डिफरेंट सीनारियोज वेन यू टॉकिंग अबाउट डिफरेंट डिफरेंट सीनारियोज इन ए पी पी वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट डिफरेंट डिफरेंट बिजनेस रिक्वायरमेंट्स इन डिफरेंट वेज कंपनी हैंडल्स देर पेमेंट सो ऑल दिस यू हैव टू अंडरस्टैंड एंड हाउ दीज आर maintained in sap and how these are executed in sap we have to talk we have to explain to the interviewer for that to happen you have to understand from the scratch from the business requirement onwards right now let's say we are making check payment so for check payment you need house bank setup you need check lots created which means system should have the check series number which you are actually holding in your company let's say if my check numbers are 100 to 150 i have 50 checks so i must have check number starting 100 ending 150 whenever i make a payment i should connect each payment document with the check number okay each payment document must be connected with check number if i know the check number i must be in a position to find out the payment and also the invoice similarly if i know the invoice i must find out the payment and i must also find out check number clear so you should be in a position to back trace and forward trace from invoice to check and check to invoice clear yes sir and you will be asked all these kind of a questions by your user by your client when you are in a project so it's not only about you are under you are able to record a transaction in sap think from a point that wherein you have to explain all these processes to your client to your users wherein you are going to get lot of cross questions from them right how do i know if my check is cashed or not in the bank that you will not know unless you update that in sap right if i have to cancel a check let's say i have given a check to a vendor but later on i have realized i have given to wrong vendor or i have given wrong amount i have given i have put incorrect signature the person who has signed is not supposed to sign on this check his signature is not valid on this check now all these things will result in your bouncing of a check yes not able to be cleared in the bank then this will result bounce a check bounce will have serious complications so how you are going to avoid these points so all these points is what you will have to understand you will have to discuss with your client your user right so how you will react if the check is bounced what you are going to do in the system how user will issue another check or a replacement check right all these points are all associated with your simple transaction called vendor payment in short it is the same vendor payment one transaction f-53 or f-58 or f-110 but the ways of executing this with the different different situations with the different different scenarios are multiple the more scenarios you will understand the more clarity you will get the more confidence you will gain tomorrow when you talk to somebody you will not feel anywhere that you are uncomfortable or what kind of a question they will ask how will i convince them because you are only aware of the basic version of it technically how payment is made in system but practically when somebody wants to question you they do not want to know about it everybody is very clear that if you have learned sap 
or if you worked on SAP, everybody will tell F110 as payment transaction, configuration steps, execution steps. But if I give you a scenario and if I want you to explain me, or if I give you a problem which I am facing in my payment and how you are going to sort it out, that is where the other person is going to judge your knowledge, your understanding. For that to happen, no other option, you have to think from the business point of view. Clear? Yes, sir. Now, all the points that we are discussing are very important for this functionality, automatic payment program. Right? Now, let's say we have all this for check payment. House bank is there, check lots are created. Then you are good to go with the check payment. Either you make the payment manually and write the check manually, or you make the payment manually, issue the check automatically, or you make the payment automatically, issue the check automatically. There are multiple approaches. So, which one you will follow is your choice. But you have to ensure multiple ways of handling a check payment. Similarly, if your mode of payment is transfer bank transfer payment if you have to make bank transfer payment again house bank is a must correct yes, house bank is a must and then vendor bank details are must house bank is must vendor bank details are must and generation of payment file is a must when i say generation of payment file is a must i mean whatever the amount that you have to transfer to your vendor you need to submit this to bank for you to submit this to bank bank will expect your information in a specific format okay each bank will have their own format they will share that format okay which is nothing but your payment medium format your payment medium will have to be generated from system so what information they want they want the supplier name <clears throat> bank name bank account number account currency amount value date all this information there will be a format once you get the format from the bank so your vendor in short your client or your user will coordinate with the bank they will give you the format in this format we want to share the data to the bank now the same format you will get designed in sap through a app again again this is a technical development your ABAP consultant will develop the format. You will have to share the logic. Once this is done, you will have to make the payment, generate this payment letter, ensure all the information is properly appearing. Only then you will proceed with this kind of a payment. Right? Now, the way you handle your check payments, both manually and automatically in SAP for bank transfers, normally we do not follow out of sap it must be followed in sap right there is no track right if it is a check there is a track check number so and so has been issued for a particular payment to a particular vendor but when it comes to your vendor payment it has to be properly tracked connected because every payment you are initiating through bank right if it is a check you are initiating from your side in front of you everything is happening but if it is a bank transfer, it is happening from the bank directly. Right? Whatever the information you share with the bank, bank will directly do the fund transfer. For that, you have to ensure right information is transferred to the bank. Now, for vendor payments, normally every company will have huge payments on a payment date. Because normally companies will do payments on a batch wise. Let's say first batch of payment or first payment lot will be done on every second day of the week and every fifth day of the week or third day of the week each company will have their own approach 
on that day whatever the invoices are due will be paid now to complete this there may be 100 payments there may be 500 payments there may be 1000 payments also manually these are not possible so every organization will go for automatic payment program majority of the cases every client will go for automatic payment program one of the commonly used functionality for your vendor payment so your prime focus is not on the manual payment screen your prime focus is always on the automatic payment screen but if you are not clear with the manual payment the flow you are not able to understand or you will not be clear with the automatic payment whatever is happening in your manual payment the same thing is going to happen in your automatic payment from the background in system right so there will be different different scenarios different different cases so each case each scenario will be different and handle it differently separately you may have to do some configuration related changes for certain things you may have to do only the user discipline related changes for certain things now how accurately you are explaining these situations scenarios matters a lot in your interview okay the more scenarios you are covering the more examples you are taking while explaining will get you more comfort will get you more positive response from the other side clear huh? yes sir so make sure you are not talking about the configuration steps you are not talking about the transaction codes and all so that is always a secondary nobody is interested in it try to talk from the business point of view try to talk practically whatever you talk should be the reality if i am an end user whatever you are talking i must be in a position to relate okay this is what i do but you are telling it theoretically but i am doing same thing on the system so i must be in a position to relate what you are telling that is where you are convincing the other person similarly your interviewer okay they are not just focused on the configuration steps from sap they are more focused on business point of view whether you are able to connect your explanation or not that requires a little more effort which you'll have to put in okay now this bank file is again a technical development through a bap now next point is your financial or accounting entries for vendor payments what are the accounting entries that we normally write for vendor payment we have written three one is cash cash payment and the other one is bank check payment the other one is bank transfer payment so in case of cash payment what will be the entry vendor account debit vendor cash account cash payment cash credit right in case of bank check payment same bank will be credited vendor debit and when it comes to bank you have to very specific bank check, check. Okay. outgoing credit okay so when it comes to transfer payment vendor debit again bank transfer outgoing credit are these entries correct yes right these entries are correct now your vendor account is always manual input vendor account is what vendor account is manual input cash gl is 
auto pick by system cash journal config clear you are not going to give cash account manually system will automatically pick the cash account based on the cash journal configuration am i clear now when somebody talks about some terminology called account determination what is this term account determination so people will frequently ask these kind of questions in your interview when i'm making a cash payment how your cash account is derived or how your cash account is determined then you have to tell cash account is not a manual input during the cash payment user will have to only input the vendor number or vendor name based on the cash journal screen cash gl account is automatically taken by the system based on the cash journal configuration so when we do it you will understand more but for now you will have to remember this simple small small points okay in case of vendor bank payment so if it is a check payment vendor is everywhere manual input right system cannot assume and it will not take a lottery to issue a payment to any vendor you have to manually pick choose to whom you want to issue a payment so vendor is always a manual input bank outgoing account is again auto picked by system app config in this there are two case one app payment case two manual payment it's a manual input clear now same is the case for your this one <clears throat> your bank check outgoing account in case of app payment it is automatically picked by system based on the app configuration correct in case of a manual payment your bank gl account has to be manually given by the user okay so especially when this question comes how your gl accounts are determined for vendor payments most of the people will get confused so they will have no answer because they are stuck all of a sudden with this question when it comes to vendor payment what is the account determination because you normally hear this account determination terminology only in case of fimm integration fisd integration but this is used in many other areas like your vendor payment okay account determination terminology comes into picture where gl account is automatically taken by the system it is not a manual input by the user clear any doubt so far any questions no sir clear it so once you are clear with all these points whatever the payment entries that we do in sap are just data entry it is just a data entry will not take more than a minute more than 2 minutes for each payment transaction but background you have to understand the concept requirement scenarios you must be in a position to relate with the real environment okay if you are not able to understand all these points but you are able to post a transaction then it is of no use when i say it is of no use that is not going to add value to your explanation when you explain to somebody the other person should feel that he is convinced 
but not like you are telling but i am not convinced you are talking relevant content but i am i don't know but i am not convinced i am not okay with your explanation not satisfaction satisfying enough so that impression you do not get it try to convince the other person for that the only option is you talk different different scenarios try to explain with practical examples relate it with your experience okay so read through these points okay and in the tomorrow's session what we are going to do we are going to record vendor payment transactions both using a cash and then back okay so tomorrow practically we will take out some vendor invoices we'll practically take one vendor one invoice and the other vendor other invoice third vendor third invoice in short for cash we will create a separate vendor we will create an invoice for check we will create a vendor we will create an invoice for transfer we will create a vendor we will create an invoice we will see how you are going to initiate the payment how your screen is looking like for payment cash and bank payment and how these are practically used in a real environment clear yes sir all right then